Hello, welcome back to the OTB channel. It's been a week and I'm going to do another review. And today we're going to look at Peppermint OS or Peppermint Linux. The reason being, it's not a, a distribution I've looked at before, but it's got rave reviews from people such as English Bob, uh, Zebedee Boss and Steve from Steve's very own. And from what I've seen, it looks a, a decent enough distro and it's certainly meant to be stable. Uh, it's based on Ubuntu LTS. So we'll give it a spin. Before I start though, um, I should say that I'm trying something slightly different today. I've been trying to get to everybody's comments on YouTube, many many of which have been incredibly kind. Um, and a couple of you have asked if I can start to produce my videos in 1080. And the answer to that is I don't really know. Uh, I've got an Intel NUC. It's on Intel Iris Graphics, and that was the reason I originally chose the safe option of 720p. So today is going to be the first and possibly the only 1080p video I produce. If I get screen for, uh, tearing or artifacts or any problems, I'll keep the video as it is, but all future videos I will revert back to 720, so it's worth a go anyway. Um, other than that, the comments that are, are starting to come in thick and fast and uh, it seems that many of you have actually appreciated what I've been doing, so it sort of makes it all, all worthwhile. I hope you enjoyed today's video. We will, as normal, have a chat afterwards. Uh, in the meantime, if I can just find the little switch here, or over there, or over there even, if you can subscribe and like, that would be really good. But... Uh, Let's start, let's give it a spin, let's see what Peppermint Linux is all about. So you should be able to see the uh, Peppermint uh, Linux web page on your screens now. I'll give Peppermint one thing before we even start. Um, it seems to be a distro where the developers have spent a lot of time making it look good and the website's no exception. It looks very, very professional. We have the option here to download 32 or 64 bit. There's a shop, let me just click on that, selling the usual merchandise. And there's also a link to a user's guide, which is always good to see. But what is Peppermint? Um, well, basically, it's a little bit of a mix. If I go to the release notes here, it uses the LXDE desktop environment, um, but with the XFCE bottom panel and the XFWM4 window manager, and it's using the Nemo file manager, which is normally associated with the Cinnamon desktop. Okay, well, nothing necessarily wrong with that. It's based on Ubuntu's long-term uh, support release. Um, so it should be stable, that's for sure. Well, let's uh, download it. Let's fire it up in VirtualBox. And let's see what it's got that everybody seems so impressed with. So you should see uh, VirtualBox now on your screens. I've set Peppermint up in the usual way. I've given it uh, eight gig of RAM. I've hooked up the ISO to the VirtualBox uh, CD-ROM, virtual CD-ROM controller. I've given it two cores, or two threads, should I say, of my i5 processor. And I've set it to UEFI mode. Now, we've had a few problems with UEFI before, uh, but this is the latest version of uh, VirtualBox, and I'm pleased to say that it seems to be working quite well. So it makes sense to set every demonstration in UEFI mode if there's a possibility that I may well install this on hard disk. And I'm actually thinking of doing that. 
In fact, you'll see that I've highlighted an entry called Peppermint 2. Uh, the one above it is one that I've been playing with. Um, and I've actually installed the guest editions. So once we've done the installation here, I'll revert to that. Uh, it's a little bit like saying, here's one I prepared earlier. You'll also notice I've been playing around with the Trident project, which is free BSD. I'm not sure if I'm going to do uh, a review of that yet. I'm still learning a little bit about the system. But enough of that. Let's fire up Peppermint and see the installation process. So far, so good. There we go. We've come to the grub screen in UEFI mode and it's starting up. You'll already see that uh, I've got it in full screen mode and the resolution isn't great at the moment. But I did find when I uh, was playing around with the previous copy that I needed to install the guest editions once it was fully installed to get a decent resolution. But in the meantime, let me just set it to 1680 by 1050 because it looks a lot better. Okay, well, that booted pretty quickly, actually. Um, it's a nice looking desktop. People have really spent time designing that wallpaper. We have the menu on the left, Windows style. And what have we got here? In favorites, we have the settings panel where we can customize the look and feel. We have control center, which allows us to control the window manager theme, the alignment, the keyboard and pointer, some nice shortcuts there, desktop effects, and what's in advanced window focus. Okay. Dropbox is installed by default by the look of it, and there's keyboard settings and a setting for font DPI, which is defaulting to 96, which is the one that I would normally stick with. There's a separate entry for tweaks to turn on or off system sounds, notifications, resetting the panel to, to defaults. Oh, and enable or disable NeoFetch. Well, we'll have a play with that once it's installed. Hardware, so printers, sound, display, additional drivers, etc., etc. A network entry, even an option here to create Samba shares. Again, we'll have a look at that afterwards. And then an entry for the system itself where we can create users and groups, define our startup applications, and there's the software manager there as well. What else have we got here? Synaptic Package Manager. It's always good to see that installed on a system. Um, I must admit that whilst most distros seem to have an app store now, I tend to default to Synaptic because it's what I've been using for years and years. You have a software manager here as well, I see. Your terminal, a text editor. I wonder what text editor it actually has. Z. Okay, that's fine. Um, accessories. Let's just see if we can make this a bit bigger. Wallpapers. What wallpapers are installed by default? We're not seeing them at their best at the moment because the resolution isn't set up properly, but we'll play around with them afterwards. A few games installed for those who are solitaire fans. Graphics, okay, not much by in there at the moment, but there is simple scan. Firefox installed by default, a BitTorrent uh, client and Dropbox, and the online user uh, guide. We have a link that goes straight there. Okay, that's neat. I like that. Multimedia. 
not that much in there at the moment. Uh, GUVC view, that's for uh, webcams. Okay, but we don't seem to have anything like the GIMP at the moment. And when we go down to uh, the Office section, I was quite surprised to see that LibreOffice wasn't installed by default. And what we actually have are links to Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Drive and uh, Microsoft Office Online. I know on their web page they make a uh, great play about stating that, that they want to be quite web-centric. And this is, uh, I suppose, a reflection of this. Um, personally, though, I think I'd like to see, to see an installed Office Suite on here as well. Then we have the settings. AR and R already installed. Additional drivers. An ad blocker etc etc and the system itself so fairly straightforward um, it's not exactly loaded up with apps but that's not necessarily a problem I personally like to play around and customize the system to my liking so let's get on with the install the install peppermint 10 uh, icon is on the desktop so let's get started Onto the language screen, yes we want English please. I'd like UK English. And what would I like to install? I'd like a normal installation please. And by all means uh, download updates whilst installing. And install any third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware while I'm at it. Usually a good idea to tick that on real hardware just in case um, you need that for your wireless to work. Presumably we'll now go to the partitioning section. And we have a few options here. Erase disk and install Peppermint. Encrypt uh, your Peppermint installation. Well, I'm not going to bother with that. Use LVM or do something else. Now, normally, I would just uh, erase the disk and install Peppermint. But on this, I'd quite like to see what happens if we try and set up a raw disk from scratch. So as you'll see at the moment, we haven't got the option to add any partitions. And that's because the raw disk hasn't even got a partition table. So we click New Partition Table. And continue. I was uh, a little disconcerted to start off with uh, when I did this on the other installation because it didn't give me the option of creating uh, an MS-DOS partition or a GPT partition. So I'm hoping uh, the installer spotted that we've booted in UEFI mode and it's created a GPT partition. If I click on the free space, I can now create partitions. So let's create a 300 meg partition. And we want that for the EFI system partition. OK. And in the rest of the free space, let's create an EXT4 partition and mount that to root. Where do you want the bootloader to go? Hmm. Okay, well, because we've set up an EFI partition, I'm quite surprised that we've got that. But nevertheless, we want to put it in the EFI partition, or the ESP partition, as it's often called. We're not installing any bootloader to the master boot record. This is a GPT disk, and it's a UEFI installation. So let's hit install now. So it's telling me um, the partition tables are about to be changed. And it's going into SCS 
i3 as ESP and SCS i3 partition 2 as EXT4. I'd quite like to see dev SDA1 and dev SDA2 there just to confirm. Uh, just so I know it's going in the right place because that threw me the first time that I did it. But nevertheless, let's continue. And it's going straight on to asking me where I am. It's already picked that up. London, England. I'm not in London, but that's the nearest way. And it's now asking me for my username. So OTB as normal. I'll set up the password. And I don't want to log in automatically. I want it to require my password. So let's let that continue for a, a little while until it finishes. I can see the time now. It's Friday evening when I'm doing this. It's just turned 17.03 and we'll come back once it's installed. Okay, well, we're done. As you can see, it's now 17.10 or 10 minutes past five. The installation has finished and it's asking us to restart. So I'm going to restart now. I am going to actually install the guest editions on this and use the version that I've installed to show you around. And we'll see if we can set up some Samba shares, install NeoFetch, and perhaps even link it up to a printer and see how well it does. Right, so uh, I fired up uh, the installation. I've installed guest editions. I've just shut it down again. And I'm going to fire it up. And hopefully it should go to the full 1920 by 1080 resolution. Because I noticed there was a little bit of uh, screen tearing uh, on the first few uh, videos I produced. I'm not sure whether that was because Peppermint didn't have the guest editions installed or whether my Intel NUC is just struggling a little bit on 1080, but we'll see, I suppose. So I'm going to stay on this Peppermint 2. This is the one I've just installed and I'm going to hit start and we will go to full screen straight away and see what happens. It is good to see that I'm not getting the UEFI errors on this version of their virtual box. So hopefully they've done something about it um, because it was quite annoying. But this seems to be booting fine. Peppermint is starting up. I don't necessarily expect it to go to the full resolution yet, but it has as soon as it's reached the login screen, which is great. Let me just type in my password. And there we have it. Peppermint Linux or Peppermint OS is installed. So now that we've got it installed, let's have a, a little bit of a play. It doesn't look like I'm getting the screen tearing to the same extent now that the drivers are installed, which is great. Let's just have a look at the different wallpaper. That's nice, I quite like that. Derwent water in the Lake District. Some flowers. Okay. And of course, the peppermint standard wallpaper that comes along with it. I have to say I really quite like that. It, it's quite striking. It's got a, a little bit of a 3D effect. If we go to the menu, well, we know what to expect here because we've just run through it. Uh, let's open up settings and see what we've got. So, customize look and feel. Okay, so that takes us to various themes. Let's just increase this. So we're on peppermint dark red, or mixed red, or sand. Okay, plenty of themes installed. Um, I think I prefer the original. I'm just going to keep it as that for the time being. 
Okay, and close that. New mix folder icons. Uh, I'm not sure what icons are installed at the moment. Was that on there? Icon theme. Right, papyrus. So they're in red. I do like the papyrus icon set. I didn't like the flat icons when I first tried them, but uh, I'm getting to like them. Dropbox installed, wallpapers. Well, we've already had a look at that. Uh, language support. Checking available languages. Let's see what it gives us. Right, it's defaulting to United Kingdom, which is great. And it's given us the option to install or remove. But it's obviously picked up all the locale settings. Keyboard settings. The layout. Generic 105 key. English, great. All set up from scratch. I have noticed that although Marte is my um, desktop of choice, that it doesn't seem to... Uh, honor any of the installation settings and I always have to change the keyboard over to a UK keyboard from US whenever I install it. Um, tweaks, let's have a look at the tweaks. Enable or disable NeoFetch. Let's enable it. I presume if we launch a terminal now, there we have it. Very nice too. Um, so you can see the resolution is uh, 1920 by 1080. The desktop environment is LXDE and the window manager is XFWM4. And we're using the Papyrus Dark icons. And you can see there it's using my Intel processor and uh, the GPU VMware. Okay whatever <laughs> and it's using 410 megs of ram which is pretty impressive in fact if i open up uh i've got my terminal open i wonder if htop is installed by default yes it is and 408 megs of memory used that's pretty low for a desktop that's um is as pretty as this I have to say okay software and update settings let's have a look what we've got here so the standard Ubuntu servers and they have a PPA installed already for peppermint let's see if there's any additional drivers available Continue using the manually installed driver. Inner tech virtual box guest service. Okay, I'm just going to shut that and not do anything with it. Hardware. Okay. Let's see if I can install my network printer. This is out of the box. I haven't installed anything in addition. So network printer. It's picked it up, the Canon MG5600. Um, let's go for, let's see if it'll do the IPP version rather than driverless. I'm getting a message on the screen at the top, additional printer drivers required. It looks like it's opening the software center, but unfortunately, the printer I'm searching for can't be found. Strangely enough, however, it has actually moved on in the printer dialog, and it's allowing me to move on to the next section. So I'm just going to cl click apply and see what happens. Printer test page. Here we go. I don't know if you're picking this up um, on the microphone, but um, despite it telling me it couldn't find any drivers, it's printing out an Ubuntu test page absolutely fine. And I think I see why. 
it's gone to uh, the driverless um, version rather than trying to use IPP. I'm going to cancel that because it seems to be working fine. Okay, I'm quite impressed with that. It's installed my printer, as simple as that. You don't tend to get that with Windows. Um, although Windows is getting better, obviously. Right. Um, we've got Network Manager there, Bluetooth Manager, uh, the Firewall. I'm expecting this to be a UFW with a GUFW GUI. Let's have a look. Yeah, absolutely it is. Uh, it's not enabled at the moment, though. So you might want to turn that on uh, as soon as you've installed. There's the printer sorting itself out. Thunderbird theme lock and Firefox theme lock. Okay. Requires Firefox. Seems reasonable. What about Samba shares? Let me just pause this while my printer's sorting itself out. Right, apologies for that. Uh, <laughs> the printing worked absolutely fine. So, Samba, is it going to be as easy to set up as the printer was? Well, I've created a folder in my home directory called Share. Let's see if we can set this up. Right. I tried playing around with this before and it was fine, so I'm going to see if it'll do it again. I'm clicked on the ad and I'm going to browse to my home directory. And I have a folder there called share. I want it writable and I want it visible. And who do I want to give access to? Allow access to everyone. Okay. Right. Is that going to work? Samba users. Add user. OTB. I'm simply playing this by ear at the moment. Please enter a Windows username. Okay, OTB. Okay. So, let's see if it's done that. If I open up the file manager and I go to network, OTB virtual box, it has indeed shared, by the look of it, my uh, share folder. It's asking me what I want to do. I'll go in as a registered user. And it's opening it up, which is absolutely great. It might be quite nice to just bring this out of uh, full screen mode and see if my Endeavor OS system is picking it up. I've got bridge networking uh, set up on VirtualBox, so there's no reason why it wouldn't. So. Let me just hit control F and go down to browse network, OTB virtual box, share. I'm going to put myself as a registered user here, OTB. Okay, it seems to be working absolutely fine. Let me go back to full screen. So that's incredibly easy for Samba. System, users and groups, what does that allow us to do? We can add users, we can manage groups. I always like to see this. And a disk utility. Okay, quite nice. And accessibility settings. Would you like to enable NeoFetch in the terminal? I think I did. Okay. Um, right, so I would personally install a few additional things. 
Um, but it is a nice looking desktop environment. So a mix of LXDE with XFCE panel. Let's just double check that. Yeah, it's the XFCE4 panel. I don't know about the menu, about. And it's got the whisker menu, the XFCE whisker menu installed. And there's the update manager. Just out of interest, I wonder what kernel it's actually running. The 500-23. So it might be uh, using the long-term support release, but the kernel is pretty cutting edge. Okay. I like this. I like it a lot. And it's certainly, for a while anyway, going to get a place on my hard drive. So let's have a chat about this. Okay, so that's Peppermint. Um, quite a result. Um, I was impressed with that distro. It's solid. It's nice looking. Um, it sounds a strange mix, LXDE and XFCE, but it seems to work. I may well run it on uh, my hard drive for a few weeks to give it a proper test, but uh, so far so good. What I don't think has gone quite as well is putting this out in uh, 1080. As I've been playing back the, um, the files, I've noticed quite a bit of screen tearing. I won't make a decision until I've rendered everything. Um, but so far, my first impressions are I might be better off sticking to 720 in the future. But I'm always one for experimenting, so uh, great. <laughs> um, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoy this. Um, I've spread this out over uh, Friday and Saturday to try and give myself a little bit more time. Um, so I, I've just got home from work and uh, I've ploughed straight into this. And I'll get it all rendered and uh, edited tomorrow. I'm hoping I'm also going to have time to produce perhaps one, another one of my quick tip videos uh, over the weekend. Perhaps looking at um, how we view things using the terminal, using commands such as cat, less, grep and the pipe command. Uh, which I think those new to Linux may well find useful. Um, but that will all depend on, on get, getting the time. In the meantime, have a great weekend and I'll hopefully see you again shortly. Thanks very much for watching and stay well.